a Cards with Michael production. Hey YouTube, what's up? It's Cards with Michael. Got another inner case of VIPs. Yep, yep, we're still doing them. And four sponsors this time. All right, let's do a little randomization. You guys can't tell, but I'm definitely looking away. All right, Josh, we'll start with you. And here is the inner case. Once again, let's uh, just, yeah, it is sealed, it's sealed. All right, let's go ahead, open it up and get to work. Wow, so uh, just recorded a Zendikar Rising, kind of my thoughts and all that goodies. Oh man, they keep making shiny stuff and we keep wanting to buy it. So, you know, <laughs> who's at fault really here? You know, at first I thought it was wizards, but at this point I'm beginning to think that if we're willing to eat it all up, buy it all up, then maybe it's our fault that there's so many goodies and they're always draining our wallets. You know what I mean? All right, Josh. Let's get you started with this inner case. Let's see what we find. Um, but uh, you know, across the board, the the double masters VIP, uh, at least the foil borderless cards, they're not really showing me too much weakness in terms of value. So I feel like, all right, well, I guess it's also too early to, to tell. I mean, look, we only had one day of spoilers, but I can already sense people going like, do I really want this foil borderless uh, force of will, or do I want? A Zenicar collector box. <laughs> so, well, you know, it's a natural way of things go. Shiny stuff is only shiny for a while. It's the new stuff that people really want. All right. And, you know, I mean, come on, guys. Stealth Masters VIPs have only been around for, I don't know, not even a month. Not even a full month yet. So, uh, the story's not over. All right. This is the first VIP pack for Josh N. Let's see how we do. Blade Splicer, Archangel of Thune, and no, 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 I already saw it. All right, but Archangel of Thune, that's a nice little mythic. Uh, of course, being reprinted like this is not great for its value, but it is a foil. And we have a Jeff Simpson. All right, come on, what's after that? An RK post coming in with a batter skull. All right, all right, all right. And if I at least got a foil island, all right. Um, is that more than a melee mage at this point? I guess so. Soldier Servo, Thopter, Golem, Tokens. Okay, okay. That was the first one. Let's go to the next one. And here we go. And I guess, you know, it's what's kind of wild is the money that uh, is also pouring to Commander Legends at this time. Like this weekend, Commander Legends pre-sales have been so hot. I've literally watched some stores go out of stock <laughs> for a, a set that's going to come out like after Thanksgiving. Um, when the set that is coming out this month, like I don't even know, like we still, we're still waiting for allocations and whatever confirmations and all that goody stuff. So... It's a wild time to be alive. Sunforger is our foil rare, all right? And a foil Blink Moth Nexus, okay, not too shabbies. And in Urza's Mine, these Urza lands are quickly becoming some of the more valuable foil rares. Um, just at around even mean. These are coming in just at the 30s and not too unsatisfied to open one of these, but what is next? Carl Critchlow coming in with a Worm Coil Engine. All right, I think, uh, you know, despite Worm Coil Engine sitting in the, I think it's like low 40s, right? I think it's one of those cards that just like the Urza Lands will be able to hold value. All right, another Mythic opening, not too shabby. And of course, another Foil John Avon Island and a Sapperling Merit Lage, Mere Elf Warrior. Okay, all right, but we're going to need some home runs because those two, uh, they were like bunts, you know? You're just passing the buck. Hoping that your next batter can really, really take it home. So let's see how we do. Let's see how we do. All right. VIP number three. And a lot of these are Cinderella story inner cases, you know? Like, we can start off very, very weak. Um, and all it takes. All it takes is a couple cards. Literally a single card. And the story is turned around. Okay, here we go. Master Splicer, Invigorate, The Disintegration, Stance. Hey, Basalt Monolith, that's a little bit of value. Inkwell Leviathan, the Architect, and Academy Runes, all right. 
But what is after that? RK Post. Another batter skull? Okay. All right. So, yeah, we do see a lot of duplicates like this. Um, batter skull is not what we want to see. Oh, another island. All right. Triple John Avon Islands. All right. And a Treasure Angel copy Sapperling token. Okay. That is that is cool. That is cool. All right. Here we go. The last VIP for Josh. Let's take it home. And you know, it's, from the base standpoint, we got three mythics already. So it's not like this is like terrible. It's just these mythics are not like the the home run mythics. They're not your crypts and your quests of wills and your swords. So we or Avison. We need one of those guys. Oh. Earth's Tower here. Can't forget the, that little bit of itty bitty amounts of value. All right. Here comes our uncommons. Of course, there are eight of them. Oh man, I'll never get used to this again. And Beacon of Unrest and a Bloodsworth Thrynex. Two little bulky rares. All right, we have a Goblin Guide. Oh, God. Oh, no. Okay. What is after this? Scott Murphy coming in with. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. Okay. F's in the chat. F's in the chat. All right, that is, and this is a double Noah Brown. Oh, that is like the worst. Okay, so we have an ape token, elf warrior token, an angel, and a copy token. Uh, okay, all right. When we said we needed something to take us home, we, we didn't mean, you know, take us home crying. Jeez. And of all the... Hilarion Academy boxes we could have opened. We, we had to do it for Josh. Come on now. All right. Well, we're sleeving up the foil borderless cards. Um, are you kidding me? I guess, uh, I guess it just happens sometimes. Okay, we'll just keep going. And... Oh yeah, and also so Zenikar Rising at this point, all 30 expedition lands have been revealed, and that's great and all. Um taking a peek, and there there of course are a lot of Zenikar uh cool stuff out there, but today was just like an overload, you know? Like I literally I think I spent three hours just reading everything. Um but by the time you guys watch this video. Uh, it'll already be Tuesday midday or in the evening, and that is gonna there's just gonna be so much more updates. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. But uh geez, it's been it's been a really exciting spoiler season. We're on day one. All right. Next we have Jason B, Keith, and Anish Ashish. All right, Jason B. Let us see what your inner case looks like. Here we go. All right. And you know, the other interesting thing about these little VIPs is, uh, I think it's a, I don't think it's like now that I, now that I've seen what the market is doing with these and how fast Wizards is kind of printing out new product, like I don't think they need to think about or address reprinting this because I think what's going to happen with the way demand works is the man always goes for new stuff, right? And hey, the little foil pongify there, and new stuff is coming out so quickly that hey, little foil basalt monolith that the sealed product, um, like the demand for it is like infinite. Like, right now, the demand for Zendikar Collectors is basically infinite. Um, little Goblin Guide and Greater Good, okay? Blood Moon and the Thoughtseize, okay? But demand is not always going to be infinite. Basically, around now, like, VIPs don't have that, like, super draw anymore. Sapperling, Servo, Elemental, Treasure. Because most people have already been able to obtain some or bought the singles they needed if they couldn't obtain VIP. So I think, like... That is comforting to me because what's also going to happen is, um, you know, VIPs are just going to kind of, all right, like they're there. They'll hold some value. They'll appreciate a little. Um, but we're already kind of, to me, 
we're we're exiting the phase of VIPs being insane. Like let's open them just for profit um, to something like, okay, let's hold VIPs for nostalgia or we need to sell VIPs if we want the capital to be Zendikar Rising. And I think a little foil Pongify. I think that's actually kind of healthy for the market. Like I don't want, what I don't want to hear is something like, oh, you know, I think like this set's going to be the next best set um, or it's going to go out of print. So let's buy a million of it and hopefully it appreciates. Because the problem with that type of thinking is if everyone thinks that, then everyone's just sitting on a bunch of that same product and, um, you know, like playing playing a game of chicken. All right, we have a Stoneforge Mystic here and usually it's followed up by another artifact. Let's see what it is. A Ron Spencer. I'm just choking. We got a, grit, a doubling season here. All right, that was a pretty solid VIP opening. And I don't expect that with uh, VIPs. To be truthful with you, Forest, Demon Elemental, and a Servo Thopter. But also part of the thing is, look, people are uh, not used to this product. We have no idea what the price curve is going to look like. We have no idea what the appreciation, the return on investment is going to look like. Um, and so it's there's a lot more risk involved. And, and risk begets returns. So like... Basically, what I mean by that is if it's extremely risky, if people don't think it's going to be a good investment product, then you're able to pick these up at, at, at a discount, typically, like um, whatever the cost to manufacturers or re distributors are, you're not going to have to pay a premium for these because no one, like people are a little foil punkify again. People are willing to let go of them for a cheaper price than usual. And um, so if you are some of the people that are willing to hold it, then great for you. But, but once again, a lot of risk. Oh, a little worm coil engine here. Gorgeous original art. And another Stoneforge Mystic. All right. All right. This is looking to be a good box. Oh. 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 Oh, my. Stoneforge Mystic and a Scott M. Fisher number 340. Jason B. Oh, my goodness. Ba -ba -ba. Wow. That is incredible i've ne i've never seen that too like this is like literally the most valuable rare and the most valuable mythic oh no and th now i know what happened with josh n's inner case maybe like so i thought so as you can see from this one we only have four sponsors and what i tried to do this time is i could i only let people sponsor an entire inner case clue germ squirrel thopter and my thinking was at the time all right, well, what I'm going to do is like, you know, like usually the inner cases are pretty good in terms of value. Like if, if a single pack, it doesn't work out, at least you'll have, um, you know, uh, other packs kind of balance it out on average. But like, I feel like that immediately backfired with Josh and Jason. So once again, apologies to Josh, but super congratulations to Jason because that was an insane pack. Insane. All right. We have another VIP. Let's go ahead, open it, and uh, continue playing this little VIP lottery. But geez, that double Stoneforge Mystic of Doubling Season, Blood Moon Thought Seas, like all the rares have been hits. Of course, the Mythics have been good hits as well. And um, yeah, I don't even know. I'm speechless with that one. I'm not, I have not seen that combination ever. That was just nuts. All right. Uh, speaking of things that are nuts, Zendikar Collectors, oh my gosh. If you haven't watched my video earlier, please go watch it. Here's a little card. Should show up in the top right. A little Lightning Greaves. Nice little value card, of course. Um, okay, got two foil rares. All right. Another Blood Moon and an Academy Runes. We don't finish strong in this one, but we don't need to. That was an insane collector case. And a little foil mountain there. Treasure Mirror Elemental Clue. All right. So like I was saying, like, look, I think the, the Zendikar collectors, once again, no, spo no no real spoilers, but they're going to be insane. Like, it's just, like, the numbers do not add up to say that these won't be just insane. Like, basically what's going to happen is every rare mythic, uh, pa standard frame is what they're calling it now, uh, card in that set is just going to be, like, so cheap. Because everyone's going to open Zendikar collectors, everyone's going to want to get those little box toppers expeditions, um... And, and you can't even, like, sell the foil box. Like, there's no way to get foil expeditions without opening the packs. Like, you can get the non-foil ones by just opening boxes, selling the packs, and just taking the, the box stopper packs. But the foils, you got to open packs. And I think that's a genius move by Wizards. Like, uh, like, uh, like, actual genius move. Like, that's what they want you to do. They want you to open packs. Like, you cannot obtain these without opening packs. And 
Opening packs means that you have removed one from the supply, and if you were to open another pack, you have to buy another pack. So, ah, oh, wow. They really did it. They, they did a good job. They figured it out. They captured the American FOMO psyche. And here we are. Keith, next inner case is for you. All right, let's take these two inner cases out of the total case box. Throw this total case box to the side and open this inner case. Uh, we have seen, uh, you know, multiple force of wills in a, in the total case. So, you know, it's still possible that we see one in this inner case, but you know, it might not be. Who knows? And a crypt, of course, is still possible as a great little hit. So, let's see how we do. Let's see how we do. Keith, I think, joked with me. He was like, "Just get me a lightning greaves," and I'm like, "All right, we can get you a lightning greaves. That's that's pretty easy to ask, right? Because like, if there isn't one, we just slide one in, right? Is that is that how it works? All right, here we go." And ba -doom, ba -doom. here we go. Pongify, nice little foil uncommon. Basalt monolith. All right, all right, we got some goodies. Lightning Grease, Wound Reflection. All right, all right. And Disciple Bolas. And an, oh no, not a Goblin Guide. Okay, a sort of body in mind. That, kind of makes up for it i guess not really all right we have a foil mountain here and a treasure plant mere clue okay but there are a lot of good uncommons in that pack at least if that helps um but yeah not as a, i guess what what i should do is only allow entire case sponsors because on a case level we basically have never lost on video at least um so i don't know if that will help it's just you know like there's a lot of risk with these. These are little gambling, little lotto, little lottery tickets. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to mitigate that. I'm trying to mitigate that. Hello, Mishra's Bobble there. Still three dollars. Nice and strong. A foil obliette, the best, most valuable foil common, uncommon. And we have an academy runes and a sneaky attack. All right, so same thing. We got some, you know, rare mythic, rare mythic, but not the strong ones. And a foil mountain, a human soldier golem, copy sapling. All right, on to the next, on to the next. All right, and what do we got here? Do, 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 do. Boom. All right, Keith, third VIP pack for you so far, so not so great. But I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Rudy clad, sculpting steel, coming in with a Stoneforge Mystic. All right, we could have got a playset with this case. And a Phyrexian Metamorph. That is kind of what I'm used to seeing, but we did just see Stoneforge plus Doubling Season, Stoneforge plus uh, Force of Will. So, yeah, I don't know. Foil Planes, Demon Squirrel, Mirror, Treasure Token. All right, the last VIP. The last VIP. Here we go. Well, the last VIP for Keith. We still have a Dish. All right. Whoa, okay, kind of went aggro there. All right, all right. And here we go. Okay, nice and quiet. So we open some goodies. And a rugged prairie, all right, that's something. Another blood sword right next. No, Urza's mind. Okay, okay. All right, let's see. What do we end off with? Randy Vargas coming with the Mythic. It's an 8-8, and it's an Avacyn, Archangel of Hope. All right, not too shabby. That's a good way to end. And the Foil Forest and a Human Soldier Golem Copy Sapperling Token. All right. Uh, yeah, that wasn't too bad, actually. Um, And the one of the cool things about VIPs is, uh, or one of the not, or one of the more, uh, stark things by contrast um, is there is a huge difference uh, between these and normal sets. Like there's so few big money hits that we can do the mental math pretty quick into knowing did we get host or did we get rewarded or did we get you know I guess average EV expected whatever. Um, I will say that these have dipped in in estimated value for the last uh, five days. Um, trending down, the index is below 2300. Um, and a lot of that is just force of will, 
um, kind of resting in that 400 spot. When it, when it, when a period of time it was more in the 450s, that's a lot of money. That's a 10% drop. So, yeah, this, those are just some of my thoughts. Uh, I am still strong on this set, or else I wouldn't be doing these openings. But I think you know, new stuff begets new stuff. So we'll 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 be seeing prices drop as we get to a new set. But to me, that's more of a phenomenon of people unloading their their now old stuff. Well, well it's not even that old. Um, to you know, buy lists or whatever to trade for new stuff. So let's see how we do in the last VIP at each. Let's go. Let's go. Um, of course, I have the option of doing these as fast breaks, but I would prefer to add prices to these. Um, I'm going to keep doing that, I think, for now. Uh, actually, honestly, I'm still undecided on this video. Um, we'll see. Regardless, it does take time to uh, render a video like this. Uh, even just to do the, the bare minimum of edits, which I like to do, prefer to do, is just add my little you know, Cards of Michael production. Eh, it's kind of a little fun little branding thing. But I am willing to forego that sometimes when I just want to get a video out ASAP. All right. We have a foil Kalia the Vast and a Blood Moon. Oh my goodness. Got to slow roll that. But look, another Abyssin Angel of Hope. All right. All right. We'll do. We'll deal with it. That's pretty good. We got a foil planes here and a clue token, Mere Merit Lage, and a Sapperling. All right. On to the next VIP. Let's keep going. I think also another thing about these VIPs is um, like we've had an issue with uh, you know, product that doesn't have a doesn't have a good way of you know, kind of protecting it like like with the Wizards logo. Uh, I think before right like, well I guess those are much lower stakes, but you know, that your spell books. Pretty sure those don't have any type of uh, wizard's logos. And I actually, I have a spell book right, right next to me. So I'm going to go grab one and show you guys. Um, so I think, you know, that that is a thing. Got an exploration. That's yeah, a ding, 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 a little winner. Toxic Day Luch. All right, let's slow roll. And a Chuck Luchas. Thoughtseize. All right. We'll take it. We'll take it. And a Foil Planes. All right. Elf Warrior Mirror Germ. Human Soldier. All right. And we'll keep rolling. Actually, well, before I do that, let's grab... So yeah, I was just thinking this the other day. Like, look, there is no Wizards logo. Well, there is a Wizards logo, but there isn't that you know, shrink wrap. You know what I mean? And uh, clearly, it's mainly because it's a high value product, not because it just purely on the you know doesn't have that uh, um, Wizards logo. I don't know. Just a thought. Like, I think if this was a five dollar box of packs, um, I don't know. Maybe that would still be a complaint, but I'm just saying I didn't really hear uh, Wizards logo missing on the shrink wrap of uh, spell books in the past. Um, so I don't know, just just a, just a thought process that uh, hopefully you guys have thought about too. I just literally realized today. All right, coming in for Bosch Iron Golem. Whoa, wowzer wowzers! That is two foil medics. Archangels of Hope, you got one of each. Very, very nice, very, very gorgeous. And we have a Stone Forge Mystic, so one of the better rare hits. And an Atraxa. All right, all right. So many angels. Well, we got the Kali of the Vast. We have our Avicen, uh, Angel of Hope. Oh, that's a mythic. Let's move that to a pile. And we got this Atraxa, Praetor's Voice. All right. Okay, all right, all right, all right. And uh, what is our foil? We've got a foil mountain here and an elephant worm. What worm is this? this is worm 2089, death touch, and a germ and clue token. Sweet, sweet. All right, the last VIP of this video. Thank you guys once again for just watching through, looking for the polls. I hope you had a good time watching this. And if you really did, give it a little thumbs up. Maybe give this a little, give the channel a little subscribe action. All those little things help a lot. And of course, if you do like this content, do subscribe so then you know. You know when the content comes out. And the content will keep flowing. The spice will keep flowing. We'll keep doing some of this stuff. Manamorphose, that's a hit. Uh, it is fun. It's fun to open. Fun for you. Oh, another exploration foil from the Foil Blood Moon. All right, playable. Oh, all right, here we go. Friends, Von Winkle coming in with a Sword of War in peace. All right. Not too shabby of a box. Ah, foil Island to boot. Drazi spawns Servo Merit Lage Elephant Tokens. All right. That is the box. I hope you had a good time. And 
as I sleeve, I'll talk about what I'm expecting in the next couple of weeks. I'm expecting Zendikar collectors to continue to rise up in prices. It's inevitable, literally inevitable, just like Thanos would say. I also expect that set boosters will continue to keep the price that they are already at. Um, they shouldn't rise anymore because simply because, in my opinion, the demand for it is a little muted now that collectors are so awesome. Um, I am very high on set boosters, though, because, well, you know, like I do YouTube, I do a lot of box openings and pack up sponsors and all that jazz. And it is nice to have something that's relatively affordable, yet still fun to open. Like that, like collector boosters are so fun to open. VIPs, even more fun to open, but no one wants to drop $100 on just a single pack. Um, you know, like there's so many potential feel bads, but set boosters, what are they going to be at max? Like five bucks a pack, maybe four and change. Like that is an acceptable amount of money to toss away at a, at a fun opening to be part of a fun opening. So I'm still high in them in that regard because collectors might, you know, easily be in the two fifties, two sixties, two seventies, heck even three hundreds. We've never seen something that sweet. And we've also never seen, uh, collectors uh, expeditions being basically guaranteed in in, in uh, one in every six packs. Like that is basically saying that you should expect to get two of them per box. And that is basically nuts, just pure nuts. All right, that's the video, done sleeping. Hope you had a good time. And I'll catch you on the next one.